like I don't understand our target wall. Neither do I. I think it's just like kind of like the posers market for Star Wars. Um, but if you said that to the wrong person, we'd be strung up for sure. They have like one of the most hardcore followings. Oh, he's gone. K Dog. Definitely. As soon as I start talking shit yeah. about track check, he's like, what the? <laughs> what we're doing is we're going up north and we go meet up with Rich. Uh, I think I've told a couple of you guys that I've kind of hit the pause button on competing. It's not because I don't support the industry and I'm kind of going back on my word a little bit here, but they relocated Dallas to April. Potentially Spartan Race and Jacksonville is still going on, but I just don't want to be the last person to you know, to the party who finds out that it's canceled again, because that happened to me a lot of times. So we're just gonna do some bucket list type things, and the first thing on the bucket list this year is I'm gonna run my first marathon. I've run way over a marathon, but I am going to run my first marathon, like traditional road running start to finish 26 miles. And it's gonna be in Hurricane Utah, called the Sun Marathon. Originally I signed up for this thing because I was stalking Nick Bear. Nick Bear, as you all know, owns BPN. Very impressive athlete. Uh, consider him a friend. He's a good guy. And he was setting up all these marathons. He was training really hard. And secretly, I was like, yo, I'm going to go and show up. I'm going to put a beating on this guy. And um, I've texted him a bunch of times. And he was always kind of like, oh, you know, I don't really know what time or what date or what race we're going to do. And maybe he was telling the truth. But uh, at this point, he's created his own private marathon, which is very exclusive in the way that I think only the members of his team and himself are going to do it. I asked if I could be a part of it, and they won't allow it. So I'm just going to go to one of the many marathons that I uh, signed up for to go race him. And this one in Utah is the one we're going after. And it starts like 4,500 feet, and I think it ends up around 4,000 feet. So there's a little bit of loss, but insignificant enough um, that it's not gonna really make a difference. It's not gonna be like rolling a tennis ball down a hill. It's gonna be some work. And we're gonna go sit down with Rich, and we're gonna look at a pace chart, and we're gonna try to find out how to pace a marathon if you've never done one. <laughs> and we're gonna try to figure out nutrition. We're gonna try to figure out what my capabilities are right now like and maybe you guys can get some information out of this like oh i've never run a marathon before i've run a 5k i'm currently in this kind of shape but i'm totally unaware of where i'm at we're gonna try to figure that out so we're gonna sit down you know rich is a little bit crazy so he might say some weird i would shit. just like to point out the marathon is in six days that's true sweet jesus yeah so i've done absolutely <laughs> no specific training whatsoever i've probably done in the, the longest run that I've done in the past I don't know six months was at the Spartan Games and I kind of was like run hiking in the middle of a pretty and it was up and down a mountain I think we climbed like seven to eight thousand feet and I covered like 25 miles it actually wasn't that bad I wasn't beat up here are the things to that are different from that event to this event one the intensity of that event I took it very easy so you know just because two distances are the same does not mean that the soreness and the ramifications of doing those two distances are going to be the same. So intensity is going to really change it. So I'm not going to go easy on this marathon. Like I obviously want to do very well and I would like to beat Nick Bear. And um, the other thing is terrain. Running on trails to some people may be tragic. Like I've never run on trails. It sketches me out. It's too hard. I don't like it. I run on trails a lot, so I'm very familiar with that. Running on pavement, if you haven't done it, can really just put a beating on you. Like I know some of the sorest I've ever been is after road races, ranging between that 10K to the half marathon distance. Now we're going to either multiply that times four or double it. And, you know, I think what you guys can take from this is, hey, Hunter is going to go for this. We're going to get some information off of him and hopefully you can extend and chase your dreams because I'm going to be the guinea pig or the pincushion doll on this test. Raw, uh, I've never run anything over and 15 miles in the past, like truly in the past three months at least. So we're going to attack on an extra 11 miles and we're going to put some speed on top of it and see if I can hold it together. So wish me luck. Predicted weather, 29 degrees. Is that true? That's what you told me. Yeah. And it's probably going to snow. Dude, I had this company send me probably <coughs> 20 pounds of red meat and sausages and porks and stuff. Holy crap. 
I don't know what the hell happened, but in, like, the past, like, during COVID, I've kind of reverted to, like, um, eating like a toddler would. Like, I only eat yogurt, Cheerios, and, like, rice, and occasionally some meat. But just because, like, I don't want to leave the house now, um, I just eat very simple things that will sit in the fridge and stay stable. Yeah. And this is probably the first time I've had fresh meat since summertime. Since that, like, five pounds of steak you cooked up? Remember when I was spending like a hundred to two hundred dollars like a day? A day on snakes, yeah. <laughs> Worth it. My finance guy's like, hey Hunter, so I just want to kind of like uh, review the budget a little bit. He's like, you spent three thousand dollars on steak last month. And I was like, um, uh, you know, you just don't see the numbers are all wrong here. Yeah. Just move this zero here, <laughs> add, subtract, long division, and we're good. We're yeah. good. Uh, my beer budget went way down because we started drinking 40s. Yeah. And like 140 would be the equivalent of like 140 a day is the equivalent of one bottle of wine for the week. Same cost analysis. So then I just skyrocketed because booze prices went down, skyrocketed meat prices. You know. I think it evens out. Evens out completely. <sighs> what kind of game do you want to play to distract me from peeing? Um, do you want to play I Spy? If I was my ally, a lawn that I'll piss all over. Um, you won't. Oh, he's here. Let's see how it goes. What's going on? You running the AC today? That's just some fancy ass pants you got on there, buddy. You don't like them? Oh, I'm just that fancy. Thanks. You know what's crazy? No. Don't show this. This is my new secret. So I get this question a lot, and I've had many times where people would tell me two things. One, I run different when I run outside versus on the treadmill. The other thing I hear from people is, I run different when I run faster. And so what I've learned, having done this for a decade, literally 10 years of analysis on athletes, all walks of life, is the most uh, important consideration is that when you're running on a moving belt, the term is rate independent. The belt's moving regardless of what you do. When you run outside, it's rate dependent. You're not going anywhere unless you push or pull yourself across the ground. So the thing that's unique is that the approach is not different. The way you approach the work is always very much the same. The difference being is that on the treadmill, I can create greater speed, I can create lesser speed, and I can see the way you approach or, or uh, react to the belt. And when I take you outside, I promise you there's very little difference between what we're doing here versus what we're doing outside. This just becomes more convenient. Yeah, mind you, I will go outside and watch people run because I want them to sense the difference from pushing versus pulling across the ground. That's the biggest. The other distinction too is that you get a little bit more lean opportunity outside than you do on a treadmill. Mm. But I've got a I got a workaround for that as well. Sick, sick, brah. I'm working. Uh, getting a little marathon training in because I'm just gonna do a random marathon. Rich is not into it. But <laughs> well, so like what I what I was thinking about before we get started is I should go get my sunglasses because I don't know that I can watch your feet move. Damn, those... man. <laughs> Shit, right. What's wrong with you guys? Is I mean, you're gonna cause reason? like one of those neon glowing fucking streams that are gonna follow behind you. I think right. I look at honey. Hey, by the way, you're like supporting my Canadian brethren. Canada. Canada. Yeah. Oh, hey. Canada. Hey. My home and native land. <laughs> Is that how it goes? Yeah. Sick. I like the little dance with it too. That's how they do it. You know how they do it like that. Well, truth be told, I wanted to go race this guy, Nick Bear. He's got to go sub three. I got to definitely go sub three. I don't think I, I'll have a problem with sub three. Well, that huff is very encouraging. <laughs> Piece of shit. No, look, you know what? Here's the way I work. If you came to me and said, look, I want to PR in a marathon, and I'm chubby. Yeah. I need to drop some weight because I'm not a marathon size guy, right? Yeah. And then we set about developing a training program. I'm writing a training program for Marathon right now. That's oh, what I over. And can I tell you something? It's 20 weeks long. It's not like a week and a half long. Yeah, but Six we're, days. We're in good shape, all right? 
<laughs> Run your fastest marathon with three and a half days of training. <laughs> that will be a seller, dude. You know those five minute abs? Like, have you been doing abs for 30 minutes? You're a seller. You train for 20 weeks? Are you wasting your life away? I can get you to PR in the marathon in three days and six hours. Dude, you can write the book. You use me as the, uh, the face of it. You know, it'll sell like crazy, too. I'll sell my rights off of that. Let's just get her done. Be honest, right now, looks pretty good. It's well, the shoes. It's the shoes. It's the shoes. Most people said, I talk to some people about our YouTube content, they just want to hear our talking and our planning and some of the running. Yeah. People are blown away by the shit that we talk about. Right. Well, I mean, that's a, we refer to that in my world as pay to play, not just being the, uh, yeah, but you got to get people to want, be interested to come here. Because they want, they want to know their own story, not mine. That's what you're selling. I could do this for three hours. How fast is this? Not fast enough. <laughs> All right, so we talked pace, right? Yeah. So you want to run a three-hour marathon? like uh, Steve Martin did that thing. How to become a millionaire and not pay taxes. <laughs> because first, you become a millionaire and then you do not pay taxes. So good news. In order for you to run a 258.38, this treadmill needs to be at 8.8 .8 miles per hour. Now, keep in mind that you're feeling right now that, wow, are you kidding? This is pretty easy. Yeah. But you've only been doing it for three minutes. Well, I also like, I got the competitive juice of flowing them out there. Yeah, so there, there's that problem because then you go out hot, you're looking good, you're beating your friends, you're winning the admiration of all the people on the sidelines. Until that infamous 20 mile mark. Yeah. And then all that chubbiness starts to come back and punch you. Now I don't mean I don't mean like you're chubby like fat, but you're heavy, you're a big guy. What are you right now? Big and beautiful. You're 205. Big and beautiful. Well you're 205? 203 this morning. So we're living life. Healthy shit, right? <laughs> I mean, this would suck. I can already tell you, this is going to be a, a long day. Well, it shouldn't be any longer than two hours and 58 minutes. Yeah, I know. But it's going to be every single one of those two hours and 58 minutes. This is the point. Okay, so here's what's happening now. I'm allowing you to just mosey along as you are, and I'm waiting for alterations in your day, because the first two minutes, Look, you don't get to stop. No, I'm just taking this off. Clock's ticking. I'm warming up. All right, so I'm waiting for that gate to start to fall apart. I, I feel like I just lost 50 pounds. That was pretty good. I don't know if my gate will fall apart. I feel like a champion. I have this really good cool coach named Rich Diaz. I train with every once in a while. You know, it's, it's like, it makes you look like an old dad. I gotta tell you something, you come here, and from the day I met you, you come to me with a reasonable idea, and then the next good. day you'll send me the, oh by the way, this is how I'm gonna fuck up that really good idea we have. There's nothing else to do. What else do you wanna do? Well, I, you know, I mean, until I release the book that says, Learn to run a PR marathon in three days. Well, if he does, you can write that book. Yeah. It worked, you guys. You're going to sell more copies of the three-day book than the 20-week. I came to you weeks ago, months ago, 
And I was like 211, a little thick and fluffy. Now I'm just lean and mean. Facing up. Facing up. Like a cobra. It's like every time you come here, you have a different goal. No, there's no different goal. Yeah. I just, hey, here's what I want to do now. I just got nothing else to do. Still want to run high rocks, still want to run races, but. Alright, here you go. Be careful when you do it. So, what I'm looking for with him is if you watch. If you watch his approach on the left side, he's, he's out on the bar's edge a little bit. When he finally gets his foot on the ground, he's pretty stable. But on the way there, this dropping in like this is causing the knee to torque a little bit. And this is why historically he's had IT band issues. And we've worked at getting that sorted out. But realize that he can handle this for an hour, hour and a half, and be unscathed, but if he goes two hours and 58 minutes and 38 seconds, uh, it may start to to lend an issue. So we, we want to try to abate that problem to some degree. Try to get some sexy pictures of my beautiful body while we're doing this, because I don't want people to forget about that. There you go. <laughs> so um, standing in the middle of the belt, we talked earlier about getting a lean. See, like right now, effectively, I can, I can allow him to lean from his ankles, which is something you typically can't do on a treadmill, which is nice. Because he's got this belt against his belly right now, when he starts to run, it gives him kinesthetic awareness. He's allowed to get a little bit more into his lean, and then he can lead more with his knees, which is what we're after. And so this alters his gait um, from a kinesthetic perspective. He just, he's just feeling what he needs to do as opposed to me trying to explain it to him. And you're gonna notice when you start to video this early uh, as he's running, that the, his ground contact's gonna improve. It's gonna be more neutral. Right? I hope so. So do I. I feel like this thing needs to be replaced because it's gonna explode. You know what, I, I, I have replaced it before and I just didn't like it. This is just money. This one's the Something one? about the oldness and the coolness of that dilapidated belt, it's, it's just money. Yeah, you and I are friends. If it snaps and hits my back, we laugh. If it snaps and hits somebody else's back... Dude, you can hit the back with a bucket. <laughs> you, can, you can take a bucket in the back, you can take a little... I, I said I, we would laugh. I'm worried about other people. Alright, let's go. I love those exercise classes where people work with the bands and the band snaps and just nails them. Like, oh my gosh. And the cooter. Let's see what we got. Okay, so I want you to put a little, let's try to get up, put a little pressure into that, that band. You need to know where you need, so you need to know where you need. Okay, so you need to know where you need. Those glowy shoes. Makes it easier for you to see, old man. You just can't, you can't sense the ground. You can't, you know, it's like, I don't know. These shoes? You, you would never put on a pair of shoes that I approved on ever. Dude, topos are fucking stupid. What? I ran in ultra forever. I didn't get any better. I ran in flats. My fastest 5K ever. A pair of shoes like this. Fastest half marathon. Look at the size of the shoes that all the Olympians are setting records with now. Can I tell you something? Those guys are going to set it anyway. They just got marketing money. So are I. You know, they got the car to give, like, give me a guy in a Ferrari and say, look, we know this car can go this fast, but we want you to wear this really stupid outfit when you do it. So everybody will buy a stupid outfit thinking the car is going to get faster. That's how that works. No. Anybody that doesn't know that. He didn't give a rat's ass. He said, Rob's Rob's course racers are dead beats. And you're a shit ass. You know the best part of the story that you haven't shared? Huh. And this is probably gonna get me in trouble, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Yeah. So here you are, you and I, we're new, we're working together. You had Isaiah Vidal with you. you remember? Uh, yeah. Isaiah was sitting over there in the corner, and every every ten minutes or so, so he would say, Hey uh, so I'm a, I'm an obstacle pro too. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. 
<laughs> he thought both of us were the biggest jokes in the running industry. But Rich probably took me from a regular 16 low to like sub 15 years ago. It was a pretty dominant period of time in racing. Taking pictures or filming? So one of the most important things about training, especially for endurance, almost entirely for endurance, is knowing how much the work that you're doing costs. So you should know your max heart rate, you should know your operating heart rate for your zones if you want to use that terminology, and then you need to run where you can hold on to that zone the longest. So if you're going to run, the if we're just talking Spartan races, the difference between the intensity you can hold in the sprint versus the intensity you can hold in the beast, maybe 15 to 20 beats per minute. Sprint may take a high level pro 24, 25 to 35 minutes. Super may take 45 minutes to an hour. And the beast can take up to two and a half hours. So obviously you can't hold that heart rate that you'd imagine on that lower end for 30 minutes. So us going into that two hours of intensity, two to three hour mark uh, for marathon running, it's important for us to know what, what it's costing us, and Rich and I have done so much work together that we can actually find out how long my body will sustain that heart rate without breaking down. Because eventually, my carbohydrate stores and my energy level is going to crack if I'm holding too high of a heart rate. There's just no way of escaping it. Your body only has a finite amount of fuel, and you only have a finite amount of training you've done before. This thing will repair you. So either you're accommodated and prepared for it, or you're just going to be like myself. We've got one week to try to figure this out. Can we out-science the workload? Um, I wouldn't suggest this for anybody, but at the same time, I wouldn't tell anybody to shy away from it. Like, live your life. Take on some challenges. Don't be a pussy. Now, I'm expecting to see aerobic for this thing. Um, we're at 126 feet per minute, 127. You can see it's charging up. We've only been running a little bit. Um, but he is pulling against his belt, which influences his heart rate pretty dramatically. Uh, but we're at pace, so if he's going to try to, if he just steady state ran like this, the whole thing, and doesn't blow up, He's golden. Uh, 141 beats per minute right now. It's going to still go up. You'll see it probably go to 150. How about you if I take this belt off, though? I'm going to, but I just want to see first how quickly. Uh, never mind, I'll just pull it off. Go. Yep. That's so much easier. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. He's at 134 right now. Because I'm a fucking beast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Snickerdoodles. You have to eat like a 12 pack of those bad boys. I hope they digest and you don't shit yourself. What do you suggest we do? Just don't try to go faster than this. If you try to go faster than this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end badly. That's all I'm saying. Where are we at right now? 649? You're at that, that 849 miles per hour, which puts you at a 258 finish line. This doesn't feel bad. It never does. I mean, it's, I've run marathons at a seven minute pace for the first 15 miles and just singing in the rain, have happy days until that 20 miles, man, and it's like somebody can knock me out. Yeah. I ran the hot little marathons, what fucking hell? There ain't no fucking hell. But about five minutes later, I was like, just death much. And I think I was rolling at about 190. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the first, the first 10, 12 miles, I was dead on a seven minute pace, the whole way. And just feeling good about it. Just having a conversation with a guy, going, geez, look at that, we're holding seven, man. Yeah, I think the most important thing you can do is worry about your migration and feeding strategy. Just make sure you stay on top of that because you can't afford to, you know, cramp up, you can't have your calves lock up, and if your electrolytes dump on you and you don't take care of it, it doesn't matter. You know, and these are the things that happen late. So you're talking about this Nick character, you know, breaking three hours and he's never been past 18. 
It's a whole other book. Have you ever run a marathon? He, he's done a couple marathons, but he's like busted. He can run like three, like four hours, yeah. 30. A big guy, what's he weigh? 10 pounds lighter than me. Yeah, well, I'm just telling you, a big guy running set four, that's, a, that's, that's money. For a big guy. You know, it's fun. Or you had to stop to take a piss and you had to make up time. Alright, what do we have now? Or you took a shit and you all know. I took a three minute shit, now I gotta make up three minutes. So now, we push into the six minute pace. Let's see what that does. the jumps, finally. 145, 146, 147, 148, six miles. We got uh, five miles and a half yet to go. 149. Yes. It's going to be hard. I mean, 150. Way. 151. This is High Rock's face. 152. Look at it just turned red. You see how it just turned red? You know what that means, don't you? Red means go. Really? Going nuts. Yeah. 155. I feel good. Like, I could talk during this. Keep talking. Okay. Tell me a story. Well, just recently, I was riding my bicycle and I tried to show off and I dumped into a rut and hit my testicles and I was literally up on my front wheel. My ball sack was the only thing holding me. <laughs> that was pretty insane. That's a strong sack. I've been drinking beer lately. I'm trying to imagine the sack hanging out of the top two of his left here, right? I did. It was on the seat. 157. It was killing me. And then, 158. Another interesting thing. I ended up, I've been drinking a little bit lately. Just shooting shit. I went to In and Out Burger, had that, and it killed me even more than the beer did. What did we go up to? 159. No, running speed. Oh, I took it 11 miles an hour. I didn't feel bad. Well, again, you had to make up for that potty stuff. But I just took it back down to nine. Conclusion is if you just hold that just sub nine minute pace, nine minute mile pace, I put you at uh, what I could say uh, right about a seven minute mile. Yeah, I feel like I'm recovering pretty quickly. Like. But that's money. If you could just hold that for the, if you hold that for the first 20 miles and decide to bust a move for the last six, you could be a rock star. The winner of the marathon last year did it in two hours and 56 minutes. If I got a pair of beans, I go in. You want to put yourself in a position to glide in after 20. When you, when you know you're at, on pace. Because even, even look at 20, you'd be surprised. 7 turns into 9.30 after 20 if you're, if you're blown out. I'm not going to say I'm trained for this, but I would say I'm in shape for this. You're probably in shape for pretty much anything. It's just, but it's, you're not in marathon shape. That's what I said. I'm not trained for it, but I'm in shape for it. Like, I could survive it. Well, I'm That's sure you could survive it. I could survive it. Yeah. You're not going to like it. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's a virtual race against Nick Bear. I know you. I don't know why you guys got filmed this whole thing. I mean, it's going to suck. So this is always my favorite part. Watch this. This water is fucking freezing. Stay in here for a while. 
stand there for a while. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, oh my gosh, dude. It does feel like a rebirth. <laughs> so, I will say I'm actually a lot more confident about myself after being with Rich. And I'm super glad that I saw him now that I've gone through the, the numbers. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm not a person who's very depressed or anxious or any of that kind of stuff, but when they took away High Rocks again, I kinda had this moment in my life where I was like, holy shit, like, it's happening again. And Rich is like, you should come up, we'll talk. And I was like, so I just drove up and I, I talked to him for just like an hour. We didn't train at all. And I was like, what, what do we do? Like, what, what can we do? And we were just kind of like bouncing ideas off of each other. I've known Rich for seven years now, six, seven years. I met him in 2014, now it's 2021. So, man, it was just a, it was a lot um, emotionally. And so I sat down with a piece of paper and I did some thinking. And the first thing that popped in my head, I was like, holy crap, I still have that marathon from trying to chase Nick Bear down. I'm like, screw it, let's just go. So I called you, Nick. And I was like, do you want to do this? You're on board. I called my friend Faith. Faith is just an awesome companion. She just is like all smiles all the time. So we were like, let's get her on board. Um, and then I called my buddy Lou. And now we have like a whole crew of people that are going to drive out there and go do the thing. Which is going to be amazing. So this is more of like, rather than a race, it's more of just like an excursion. Have a little fun. Don't take life too seriously. And... You know, that was the emotional arc of it. But um, from like a training standpoint, it's pretty interesting. I think I can basically hold between 138 beats per minute to 145 beats per minute running a 6.50, 6.45 pace. And obviously Rich at the end turned it up a lot just to see what would happen if I needed to, like if I pooped my pants and I needed to catch up. So... <laughs> We, we did that and now we are gonna go home and absorb all the information and try to apply it again on Wednesday. Just maybe go for like a 75, 90 minute run at the same pace and see what that feels like outside. I think outside probably gonna be actually easier than being on the treadmill. Treadmill is kind of a, it's a hard thing to push paces on treadmills for long periods of time. Great for doing like serious little stints of training and intervals and stuff, but that extended stuff, it sucks. And then we're gonna be driving out to Utah and we're gonna kick some serious ass. But there's also another side of the coin that we haven't really talked about. We talked about it lightly, nutrition. We do need to find out how to pull in fluids and pull in um, like nutrients during this whole thing. I would say marathon's one of those crucial events where you're kind of burning hot enough that you really do need fueling to get through the thing. Um, it's not like an ultra marathon where you can kind of just chill and snack and stuff. Like, you'll truly burn out during this stuff because you're going fast enough that it makes a difference. So, let's see what the hell happens. Units for sale. Da-da-da. <laughs> Pay attention to the road. Oh, fuck. <laughs>